through the control system that I've chosen. I've gone from for the Lockstore Digital Lodi system. I looked at multiple systems out there, um, Digitrax and others. And to be honest, felt they seemed a little bit out of date given today's modern technology. Uh, I think this, this one really works. So looking throughout the components, it all starts with the, the power strip that comes through, which then feeds off two ways. One way, the power supply goes down to the rector. Now the rector is the main control unit. That's the big brains of the operation that controls everything else. Hanging off the rector is a booster, which is the power supply for the tracks. That then feeds out to, to the tracks. The other component we have is the second one is the shift commander. That is designed to do all the point throwing. And then the S88 commander takes the inputs from the track to do the um, block detection. There's a separate power supply here that is driving, that is connected into all the units that drive the points. So all the accessories on a separate power supply to the main track feed. And then I have a hub for connecting all the components together. It's all over a Cat5 system. These link uh, to all these devices back down here, and each of these Lodi control systems are powered through USB-C. So I have a USB-C um, hub here with a with the display on the the power output that's happening. So that that's the main brains behind the system. On the back, you'll see that everything is wired through underneath. Uh, to keep everything hidden. I've also got this board on casters so I can wheel it in and out and every cable is numbered, catalogued, so I've got a complete uh, system, a database that shows me what goes from where to where so I have full traceability. Coming to the output side again, we've got um, the Cat5s that then go off to the different components. The two yellow ones are actually my internet in and going. the other one's going to the um, PC that I use to monitor and use iTrain, so it's just using the internet off this board. The other ones are going to the panels, which I'll show you now, which is one per baseboard. So this is the first baseboard that, uh, control panel that's been put in place. The inputs come from the, uh, the main system and then when they finish doing their job they will then patch on to the next system, the next board. Within these components coming from the shift commander uh, we have two units here. Each of these controls eight points so that's control there for 16 points and I've used this detachable chop block so I, when I when I need to do any maintenance or bring this panel down I can just disconnect everything and that's the power coming in uh, so I'm using red and yellow for power for points so it comes in here then behind the board goes to here and is distributed to both of these units similarly the power for the track comes in on the black and red comes across behind the boards and is distributed one in and then two outs to drive the power to the tracks. Which brings me to these units, the GBMs, two of these, each one of these has eight blocks. So this is for 16 blocks. So when I look at my track layout, I'll have um, track detection, block detection for each of the sidings and, and points and all that sort of stuff. So I know where each train is, which is clearly going to be important for um, train control. Uh, again, using the I need it so I can pull those back. Uh, the behind of this power, which I won't get to because I've, as you can see, it's it's screwed in, is the same as the baseboard in terms of full cable management. Everything is documented again from where it goes, for, you know, from, from, from cable in, goes to which to in, out. They're, they're all labelled. So if anything goes wrong, I can track it down quite happily and update. When I'm not using it, it then snaps back up there on magnets. Um, I've got a little bit 
need to fix my gluing. I don't think these plastic connectors really like having uh, the glue I'm using, so I will change that and get that clamped back up there and, and secure. From a physical control standpoint, the Lowline system has a very nice wireless, it's Wi-Fi based system, color screen, it's also a touch screen as well, uh, which has full control of the system, so you can use um, control the points, set the trains going. So this is the software which you use to program Lodi equipment. It runs on PC and Mac, um, but I also use it as a way of monitoring what's happening with the system. I have this displayed on a screen on the wall above the layout. So the Rector is the main piece, that's the main brains behind the system. So within that you then have the ability to do some manual loco control should you want to. Um, but fundamentally it's driving the bus which is really connecting all the bits and pieces together. So on the booster that I have, I have one booster right now, and each booster can do two power districts. Within the booster, you can see the booster current that's going through and the voltage, the temperature of the unit. It has a built-in fan for if it gets too hot and the ability to monitor and update firmware. The bus then talks to all the other units through the rector. So the S88, this is the piece that does the uh, block detection. So I currently have connected two of the S88 block detection units. Each of these block detection units on my, on my main control board can talk to eight of the, uh, of the devices, these GBMs, the block detection systems that sit around the unit. So, working this backwards, the main system can have multiple buses. Each bus, each one of these bus units, these, these commander units, can have um, a whole range of, of, of the GBM sitting off them. Each GBM does eight. So, you can do the maths, so you can get quite a lot of power districts. And if I need more, then I add some more of these S88 buses. I currently plan to have four. Um, and then each of those um, will be around, around the system. Um, when it's operational, you can see where the power is within each district. So this 8GBM is having multiple power districts, as you can see, and you can adjust the levels uh, and see what's happening. So it's good to see where, where there is activity across the system. Moving on from the block detection, you have the shift commander. That's the other piece. This is the piece that does the control of the um, point motors. I currently have two of the four WDAC units. Each of these units controls four point motors. So right now on that first baseboard, I've got sufficient capacity to manage um, eight point motors. As you need more, you add more. And I've got a drawer full of these units to just add into the system as I need more and more points. And then off each of these, you then, from the eight channels, you would then have points. So you know, a left-hand throw would have a, an open and a closed, which would be one and two. There'll be a graphical representation here. Um, I can add one in, but I, it's disconnected right now. So if I just drop that in, it's now that channels one and two would be towards point motor that's a left hand, and I can adjust them manually, which would then throw the motor. Um, similarly, double slip has two point motors. Um, single slip uh, so this is this is a way I'd have four point motors here, two left turnouts and a, and a and a double slip. So you can then control things accordingly. Just a very nice graphical representation. So in summary, again, rector is the main brains. It has the booster which provides the track power. You then have the SAT8s which do block detection, and within each of this 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 main unit for which you have one you then hang multiple buses off the bottom each bus can handle eight blocks you then have the shift commander which is the brains behind throwing the points underneath that you have multiple of the four wdacs each of those control four point motors um, as, as necessary including signals and lamps as well but let's let's not worry about that right now i'm way off that 
So that's that. And I, I, again, I quite like this because I, when I do run trains around, I just have the um, just have these up so I can see what's going on and just make sure everything's operational. Um, and this then obviously directly feeds into iTrain, which is uh, another day. So that's the control system.